All right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashabu amayi al-Mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So, uh, uh, again, I just want to thank Sister Amber and Brother Majib for uh, taking time to joining it, join us tonight. Um, and I think where you, where you were leaving off, I wanted to ask you a question. Yeah, um, of course. You, one thing that you said that I thought was interesting was you said that... Um, is it me? I think it might be some feedback. Or is it me? Okay. Better? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you said that you were kind of describing like the deeper sense of like kind of contentment or relaxation that you kind of felt after accepting Islam. Uh-huh. But you also said that you're still facing a lot of the same challenges. Yeah. So what's, what's the same about those challenges and what's different, if anything? Well, I guess as like a Westerner, you, you're so um, programmed for certain things to be okay, right? Um, the no clothes, like the very skimpy clothes at like 12, 13 years old, um, the kind of stuff I watch, the kind of stuff like I consume, um, you know, or still also kind of, that's me. Sorry, we'll switch. There we go. Um, and then, you're good, you're good. and then also for me too, because I have been, because I have always been on my own, that sometimes my first thought isn't Alhamdulillah, or my first thought isn't like, well, this is God's plan. My first part thought is like, how am I going to fix this? Like, what did I do? Like, what what do I do? How do I make it better? You know, so. Um, as much as I am learning all these things, there are times where just by habit, um, my first thought isn't initially Alhamdulillah. And, and it's almost kind of beautiful though, because then it does remind me Alhamdulillah. Cause at, at first I'm like, no, 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 wait, you're supposed to just trust. Like it's okay. Like, you know, like having financial problems, like money is nothing, you know, in this life, money's not, I'm not taking money with me. And like what Jenna has for me when I get there is more than anything this life could ever have. And, um, also like, just like little bad habits, like stuff you watch, stuff you, you consume, like things that in a Western society are so normal for us that when you learn Islam, you're like, no, like this is not like the jokes they make, the, the things they portray, the the stuff they say. And so those kind of like little habits as well, I call it trash TV, you know, like my trash TV, like I'm trying to break those as well. So yeah, it, 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 it's got a lot of perks, but then it also has a lot of reminders of like things that I still need to work on. So how do you balance between like, you're trying to make progress, you want to do things better, but you also don't want to be like, too hard on yourself or burn yourself out or I try not to um, beat myself up, but I also try to list like when I'm feeling really bad, like, Oh man, I'm not doing something right. I try to listen to a lot of prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, like stories or YouTube things. And something will always pop up where it reminds me like, um, women didn't get into the hijab till like 15 years. You know, or, you know, the prayers for all five prayers really didn't get established till eight years in and and like small things like that. So I tried to remind myself that our prophet, peace be upon him, told us to be patient, like told us it's okay to you told me the story about one of the companions, right, who had his own vices and prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never treated him differently. And so I, I tried to look for the prophet in ways of how I should kind of think or ease on myself or relax on myself a little bit when I'm beating myself up. If I make a mistake, like I listen to a rap song or on some days I'll catch myself kind of cussing more than I have been the last couple of days. Cause that's also something I'm trying to like, you know, cut out. And then I'm like, Oh man, like you're messing up. You're messing up. Or for me, I'm still trying to establish my prayers five times a day. So there was a moment there was like, well, if I miss one, I just might as well not pray at all. But then I also try to remember myself or remind myself that Allah loves, loves his servant that repents. 
So I try to wholeheartedly just repent, you know, and ask for forgiveness and astaghfirullah while I'm praying. And, you know, someone finally told me, like, how I'm supposed to, like, give my duas at the end. You know, I'm supposed to um, call my call Allah by his name, then all my astaghfirullahs, and then be very thankful, and then praise the Prophet, peace be upon him, and then go into. So things like that just, just help. And, and reminding myself that I'm only eight months in. Like, yeah. I'm going to make a mistake. I might learn something that might not be 100% correct. And I just try to give myself a little bit of grace. That's beautiful. Mashallah. And uh, Brother Mujib, for you, the same question. So, or I guess a different question. So seeing her, except go through that journey, go through that, that fight and that, you know, sort of um, difficult experiences afterwards. And then the Tahajjid and coming to Islam. How did that how did seeing her go through that affect affect you, affect your faith? I mean, to me, um, it, it, it just makes me deep inside just really happy. You know, if I can if I can be just a little bit of help, if I can be just a little bit of guidance, um, that's the world to me. You know, and to see her flourish and to see her work her way through, you know, life and be the person that she is supposed to be or the person that she's going to become, that is so enlightening. You know, even for me, it motivates me. Like I said earlier, it's like, oh, I got to, you know, she'll remind me, hey, I'm going to go pray. But, oh, shoot, I got to go pray. You know, so to me, it's also a very strong reminder. Like, you know, I see something in her. You know what? There's another person that I see something in. Too, that I can work on that person as well too and help them better their life you know so there's a lot of aspects of her becoming a Muslim and somebody else that I've converted the other person that I've converted you know that it, it, it's you know obviously you know Alhamdulillah I get the blessings you know from Allah itself but you know it, it, to me just seeing them grow into the person that they are really the, the person that they really are is just uh, to me, it's an accomplishment, you know. So, how do you, how do you feel if like, do you feel like Islam or your faith or does these experiences the last eight months? How has it affected your like your martial arts, your fighting? Um, well, it's really taught me to. I obviously didn't win the tournament, right? And and on the last fight she finished me in like a minute. And in that fight, I felt like I wasn't even in control of my own body. And as soon as the fight was over, something like all over me was like, now your faith will be tested because you turned to Islam and everyone was like, Oh, when you turn to Islam, like all it's blood, you're going to win, you're going to all this stuff. And then Allah was like, no, you struggle with your faith. So let's see you have faith when the biggest opportunity, the most money you possibly could have ever made is taken from you. Now what? You know, and I think mm -hmm. that it, it pushed me farther into Islam. It actually made me made me want to get closer to God and deeper and, and more involved. But as far as my martial arts, it's um, helped me take some emotion out of it. Um, the, it also made me is it is making me. Because fighting only lasts for so long, right? You can only be an athlete for so long. And as fighters, we almost identify with fighting. And that's why you see some of your favorite fighters who get close to retirement. You're like, man, why can't this guy just hang it up? Like, this is my, I'm watching my favorite fighter just get demolished. Fighter, fight. Because we literally identify with it. It is our way of life. And now that I have Islam, the only way of life I have is Allah. Like that is everything else is secondary. Nothing else matters. The the person I fall in love with, the the money I make, the career. At the end of the day, the only thing I live for is to get closer to God, to be a a, a, a respectful and amazing servant to God, and to you know make sure my hereafter is, is something sweet and not you know something not. So yeah, it's just helped me kind of separate what's reality and what's not. But yeah, so, so it's that. And cause as a fighter too, you can, I'm seven and six as a MMA fighter, right? So that means I've won just as many as I've lost and I've had, 
beautiful head kick knockouts. I've had beautiful knockouts. I have like, I have like a, I don't know, it's probably like an 88% finish rate, but I also have a hundred percent being finished rate, you know? So with something like that, it can make your emotions go up Mm. and down because this is your life, right? You've spent your entire last 10 years trying to be the best in the world and might not be yours, you know, but whether fighting was to bring me to a million dollars or world title fighting was meant to bring me to Allah. And that's what my fighting was for. And at the moment I started to convert, I started meeting a bunch of amazing Muslim fighters like, you know, like these, these guys who are from different countries whose whole life is Islam. And it just, it's, it's like now, like not only am I a fighter, but now I'm a fighter. That's a part of Islam. Like now we're like in our own little group. So whether I win or lose or whatever, it's all, it's all okay. It's all, alhamdulillah. it's all good. And which is something I didn't feel before I had Islam before it was like, if I lost, I'm a loser. That's it. Like I'm not getting out of bed. I'm not doing anything like everyone's going to have a bad day because I'm having a bad day. And now it's like, it's cool because look, it's brought me to like these amazing events, like these amazing things. Like I've put on multiple all women, sister events at the gym. I'm doing my first self-defense here. So even if at the end of my career, cause I, you know, I just turned 36. So it, I, there's only so much I got left. At the end of it, fighting has brought me to way more beautiful things and um, beautiful people and all through like Islam now, you know, like I was telling you the other day, my Instagram, I lost like as soon as I started posting about my support to, to Gaza and Palestine, I lost thousand followers in like two days. But then alhamdulillah, I went up like like 2,000 of just Uma. Like, I gained like 12,000 followers of just the Uma in, in just a couple months, you know, so yeah, Islam has done so much for me when it comes to my fighting, and yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful reflection about how, like, sometimes we're like, "Oh, if I begin Muslim, like, everything is gonna," and then you were tested, and it I seems mean, like you I, knew you were being tested. I've had people. I we won't say his name, but he's a super famous fighter, just won a belt, and he literally messaged me like, "I can't believe you, as a woman, want to be a Muslim." Da 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 da. And in my head, I was just like. Like, like you're contradicting. You're like, you are such an evil person. Like you are like from your heart, like really saying how you feel. And here I am just living my life, trying to get close to God and better myself. And it really let me know, like it it was a big realization, like people who down talk Muslims or talk bad about Islam or all like, they just really don't know like the amazingness that comes from being a Muslim or in Islam or this amazing Ummah that we're all now a part of. Like I've been through a bunch of groups in my life and never in 36 years have I felt more welcomed, more loved, more accepted, more honored, more just everything. than when I became a Muslim and I got to meet like all these amazing sisters and all these amazing brothers are part of this Ummah. So it's been a nice eight months, really. It's been a very clarifying eight months. We're honored to have you. Um, we can open it up for questions and answers now. Um, yeah, we can open it up, inshallah. There's a brother back back there. That's uh, And? Uh, as an athlete, um, what would you say like helped you like get through tough times and like what motivated you to become you know the best possible fighter that you can be? <laughs> through the tough times, which what really motivated me was my brothers. So like I said earlier, I have three brothers and uh, they all go through their own struggles. And my, my family, we weren't supposed to make it. Like I wasn't supposed to make it. I was supposed to be the one that ended up on drugs in prison, five kids, eight different baby daddies, you know? And, um, and so to be able to win or lose tough days or whatever, to just know that I make an impact on people's lives just helps me keep going all the time. So doesn't matter how rough the training gets, doesn't matter how low, you know, I, 
fighting is not a rich sport. So if you guys are like, oh, I'm going to be a fighter because I want to make all this money, like some days, sometimes it's not like that. So it's a struggle. And But God now helps me get through my rough days and also just knowing that getting through rough days, that there are people watching that are younger than you and they want to see you succeed through your rough days. So, yeah, I hope that answered the question. Assalamu alaikum. Um, so after you converted, how did you build up your faith? Um, well, when things would happen still after I converted, like bad things was, um, making sure that to pray it out. Right. And everyone was like in prayer, like cry to God that was. And so at first I was very reluctant to do so. And then when things started to go bad or I needed to have faith, I would even like right now, I just pray to God and I cry to God. And then that helps me. It it really does help me build my faith because every time that happens, something inside of me is like, uh, now you feel that like, you're okay. Like, do you feel like I've got you, you're protected. And I think that every time I feel that a little bit more, like, look, you looked to me, even when things got rough, it, it makes my faith stronger. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel like no matter what, I'm going to get through it. Even if I don't win a belt, or even if I don't get all these things or what I'm going to get through it because my faith is growing. And then after you converted, did you ever affect your family? Like, how can I explain it? Like, did you teach them a little bit about Islam? I, I do. Yes, I do try. And um, one of my little brothers lives with me and he's so cute. Like, he'll go grocery shopping and he'll buy like beef hot dogs or like beef like breakfast sandwiches or I seen like I don't even eat corn dogs, but he bought beef corn dogs, you know, cause he knows that like pork is not good. And, um, so yeah, I do. I try to I, as much without like trying to like shove it down their throats because like I said, my family's not very religious, but I do try to involve them. My mom too. My mom will ask all kinds of questions, you know, like, Oh, why do you do this? Why do they cover? Why do they have their scarf on? Like, you know, alhamdulillah, like you say it all the time. What does alhamdulillah mean? You know, you say, my brother will go, oh, here she goes, astaghfirullah, through the house, astaghfirullah. So, yeah, I do try to, to give them little little doses where I can. Yeah. And then, um, when you converted, since you were trying to also build up your faith, are you planning to, um, sorry, hey, um, are you planning to start fasting? Because I know Ramadan is actually coming up. Yeah, I, I'm going to participate in Ramadan this year. I am. I have not um, pre-fasted uh, until then. I know I have this month. Right? That's why I was asking you what Shaban was, right? Because I just learned about the, the month before Ramadan. Um, but I am. I'm going to fast. We're going to we're gonna do it. And this is where I'm hopefully going to kill some bad habits too of like the music or TV shows I watch and things like that. I have amazing people helping me through it because I'm like, oh, I'm all alone. Alone. I got no family. I've got people that invite me like, you can come over to dinner. You can break your fast with me, break your fast. So yeah, I am going to participate in it and I'm extremely excited. And then I have questions for Mr. MJ. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So um, this was mainly about when you talked about it first that you were going to get smuggled into America. I think I might have misheard it, but how did you get to America? Uh, on an airplane. Oh. Because <laughs> I might have misheard it. Like, you were saying stuff about smuggling, and I was like, wait, are you saying you got smuggled into America? I'm like... In a suitcase in the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, uh, we, I got, we got smuggled from Afghanistan into Pakistan somehow and then over here my uncle um had landed in Afga- from afghanistan here and uh they you know at that time you know seeking asylum and stuff like that over here then they sponsored us to come to this country so and the sponsorships were a lot easier back then and then um you said that at one point uh, 
in your life you got led into parties and other things that you shouldn't have how did you get out of those habits my wife yep yes um you know we you know once once i met my wife then a lot of things changed you know and um i didn't go out with anybody i didn't party with anybody but you know that was my 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 party partner you know everywhere we went i went with my wife anytime i did anything i did anything with my wife anything i did i ran it through her you know so happy wife happy life sometimes <laughs> And then, do you guys both live in LA? Because I think when you guys were talking, you guys were uh, you guys were saying something about LA. Uh, and then, where's your gym? Yeah, it's a few minutes away. Yeah, it's in Dublin, right here. Yeah. And MJ is opening a new gym in Blackhawk, so alhamdulillah for that. Like now there will be two. So there's CSA, the regular, which is like more fight related CrossFit here in like seven minutes away. And then MJ is going to open a bigger, more commercially kind of 24 hour fitness slash fight gym in Blackhawk. So now we'll have two places semi close. And then in your gym, uh, what do you teach? Do you only teach like kickboxing and boxing? Um, I teach the kids 5 to 14. I teach them Muay Thai. I also teach CrossFit. And then I run the morning programs, which is adult. So it's going to be boxing and Muay Thai in the bag classes. And I also will jump in and teach a little jiu-jitsu every now and then. I wanted to say something on that part. Um, there's a lot of sisters here. So... Um, you know, we, a lot of parents, a lot of mothers and fathers have always approached us and said, hey, you know, I want my daughter to train, but I don't want them, you know, with other people or the crowd or, you know, my daughter wears a hijab. My, you know, I don't want her to be involved in such things. And I always tell them, you know, it's important, especially in this day and age, you know, that you learn to defend yourself. You learn to protect yourself. You learn to do those kind of things, you know, and with us, you know, we protect you that way. You know, I've had multiple, multiple fathers come to me and say, hey, I really want my daughter to train. I really want her to learn how to defend herself, but I don't want her in, 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 in you know, partnering with another male. I don't want her partnering with this. And, you know, we're very accommodating to that. And I just want to let a lot of the parents know that it's a good thing that if you were to get your kids into martial arts, it's very important that you get into them because of the day and age that we live now, you know, so they can learn how to protect themselves, so they can learn how to defend themselves and their family. So don't be afraid to walk into a, a, a gym because you wear a hijab, you know. Don't feel afraid because you're a Muslim and you're not welcome, you know, go into those places, feel comfortable, you know, do your thing, learn how to defend yourself because in Islam, we also have to take care of our health as well too. It's very important that we take care of our health. So don't ever be afraid to walk in there and don't ever, if, if it's not our gym, walk into a different gym and just say, Hey, I want to learn, but I also need to be, you know, not be around the normal people. I don't want to be touched. I don't want to be, you know, things like that as a respect factor. So That's also why I started doing my um, women's events. So um, I try, I know we're doing the first one here at MCC, but I've done a few at um, CSA, which as soon as Ramadan's over, I'm going to start doing them at CSA again. They're, they're completely free and I, I just offer them as often as I can. So, you know, if it is something that you, what you ladies are interested in, but don't necessarily feel comfortable walking into a regular gym, you know, make sure you guys get my Instagram or anything like that. And I, I try to keep it posted when I do do them on my Instagram. So, you know, you all are always more than welcome. And then when is the one here at MCC? It's on Sunday, but I believe it's full. Yeah. So it's on Sunday. I believe it's full, but inshallah, it goes well. Then Munir's going to have me here every day. Don't worry, guys. No. <laughs> Leave it up to Munir. Jazakallah <laughs> khairan. All right. I'll come back to you, sister. Go ahead, young man. 
Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. I just have a question. Like, in general, well, what is like the hardest thing? In like, what is the hardest thing? What what what? What you try to become pro? The hardest thing about becoming pro is the is the 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 stuff that you don't see. The not being able to pay your bills, to not especially if you don't have any family helping you out. But the cold nights alone, the the not having enough food in the fridge, the the early mornings, the the broken down car. I know a lot of fighters who are homeless actually, and they sleep in their cars in the parking lot. Um, those are the hardest parts about becoming pro because it's something that like your Conor McGregor's don't talk about you know, as much once they get like super, super famous. But yeah, I think that those are the hardest parts and it's just being like, okay, like this is just a moment in time. It's not the rest of time. So like, let's just keep moving. I also have one more, like, how, how, how do you deal with students who like, who, who don't really want to learn and I still trying to teach them something? Um, well, those ones, you have to threaten to hang them from the rafters by their toes if they're children, and then they usually shape up pretty quickly. No, I'm just kidding. But um, th you just have to remind them, like, hey, you know, your parents pay. If, if they're kids, it's like you have to remind them, like, hey, your parents pay a lot of money for you to be here, and since you are here, like, let's get the most of the hour, right? Like, you don't want to spend the whole hour with me yelling at you or barking orders at you or telling you to stop doing this or that. So, you know, I just try to remind people or even like some adults or teenagers, right? Because the teenagers come to the gym and usually their parents are forcing them to be there. So those ones as well, I try to just remind them like, don't waste your hour. You might as well learn something while you're here and you never know, you might be able to take it with you the next day. You're welcome. So Marika, um, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to give a testament to how amazing uh, your gym is. Oh, thank I you. have two of my kids go to CSA. One of them uh, does Muay Thai and boxing with MJ, and one of them does CrossFit, um, a daughter and a son. And it's a very good gym. They're very respectful of everyone. And if you're thinking about it, yeah, for sure, look them up. And I did also Amber's women's event, and it was amazing. So anytime that opportunity comes up, I Highly recommend our sisters. She's my new Islam buddy. She's been hitting me up like, hey, come with me to the sisters event. Like, you know, like, what do you need? Like, it's been sending me like stuff to, to help me um, translate the Quran and stuff. So also thank you very much for that. But yeah, so the, the sisters are amazing with me at all times. And I'm very appreciative of it. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Amber. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much for sharing with us. It's so amazing to hear your story. Um, they look at you ease in, in, your, in your journey. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, do you have any recommendations for hijabi workout wear or like kind of um, mod dressing modestly in the gym? So uh, this is a new realm for me. I don't necessarily wear the hijab when I'm out yet, like outside. Um, but um, I have been trying to switch from like your tiny little gym clothes to more modest stuff. And there's a brand called Haya. H-A-Y-A, Haya, that makes these really beautiful, long, um, like, shirts, but they're, they're not, like, you still see, like, a little form, you know, they're not, like, they don't look like just, like, long abayas, um, so I really do like that brand, but honestly, I've just been big shirting it up, like, some nice, like, loose pants, um, something comfortable, and, you know, I, I don't feel like just because other women at the gym don't want to wear no clothes like that's what you have to do to fit into a fitness environment because it's not true you know um being fit and working out is not necessarily about how you look it's about how you feel and it's about being healthy and strong and being able to defend yourself if you need to and just to feel good in your own skin so don't ever let um society or the way the Western world thinks is beautiful, deter you from stepping into a gym, right? You go in there and you, you be your authentic self no matter what. These are being funny. Um, okay, so I do have one question, Sister Amber, uh, real quick, and I'll hand it back over. So you have a public profile. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of bullying that happens in public schools. Here in the Tri Valley, in the progressive Bay Area, there's a lot of bullying going on. How do you deal with the online bullies? How do you deal with the comments? How does it get to you? 
don't read them. Don't pay any kind of attention to them. Like, honestly, like don't get into arguments online. I know like for me, because I'm very, uh, I speak up a lot about Gaza and what's happening in Palestine. And so I get a lot of very hateful, evil things said to me, or I've been in some like really nasty arguments, um, or even like a fighter. Like I said, I've been knocked out a few times. I'm seven and six. So people always like to hit low blow. Like, Oh, well you should just stop fighting. Cause you suck at it. Well, it's like, you're just behind your computer, you know? Um, so what I would say is like, don't even waste your time with it. Like you, young people, especially do not argue with your classmates online. Do not like use the internet as a way to socialize or like get back at each other. And if people are trying to bully you online, block and delete, like that's our motto at CSA block, delete and block and just keep it moving. <laughs> yeah. Let's not. <laughs> yeah. Sound like well, like so. Are you fighting or are you retired or you, you will be fighting? Oh, I'm still fighting. I have a couple years left and uh, alhamdulillah, because I'm no longer with PFL, it will give me an opportunity to fight here regionally, locally. So my next fight hopefully will be in May at the SAP Center in San Jose. So I already told Coach K, I said, I'm going to have the UMA there. You better watch out. It's going to be van after van of the Majid. Just... So, uh, yeah, like I'm still fighting. I still got a couple years left. You know, we want to give, give these last couple years a good little run, but yeah, I'm still in it. Awesome. Uh, just a follow up, uh, since PFL has bought Bellator, any chance to you going back to PFL and competing? Yeah. So, uh, I, I didn't get re-signed, which is cool because they're going through so much transitional stuff. There's a good chance. A lot of my weight class is going to sit on the shelf for a year. Um, and I'm going to earn my way back. They told me to win some regional titles, come back with that. And hopefully when I do that next year, they'll have my weight class back for that million dollar tournament. Cause they're not doing that this year for the featherweights. And, um, yeah, I'll get my, my second shot to win a million dollars. So, yeah, yeah. So, this is a question for both of you. Is there any martial arts class for women, uh, Muslim women and girls? Well, right now I'm just doing kind of special events. I don't have anything specifically on the docket. I am trying to get Coach and MJ to let me permanently do one on Sundays. But, you know, we're working on that. And so right now I just – last year I think I did – four, six of them. And it's something that I am trying to do a little bit more. I am going to wait till after Ramadan, just because I don't know what I'm going to feel like during Ramadan. I don't want to put too much on my plate, but hopefully I'll get something more consistent. So at least I'll have something that will be tailored just for women and uh, girls. Um, the other thing too, like I said earlier, yes, if you, you know, I know we're here, but other gyms, I don't know about, but to us, if you want to send, you know, your female to us, we will take care of them. You know, we will help protect them. We will help them not partner with somebody that you don't want them to partner with. So if you want to send them to, to us, we will definitely take good care of them. So they learn the same thing as everybody else does without having to be with everybody else. So we have, we'll, we have, we have two uh, girls with uh, hijabis. We have other females as well, too, that are Muslim. You know, uh, not as modest, but you know, um, but they're there. So yeah. Hi, assalamu alaikum. What's your favorite so. thing that you've learned about Islam so far? Um, I'm really enjoying right now learning about the prophets, all the prophet stories, which is something that I was always like really curious about. Right, like growing up, you hear like there was Adam and Eve, but it was like, but then what, you know, like, okay, Adam ate the apple. Okay. Well, what happens then? So right now, I think my favorite thing um, to learn about Islam is the prophets. And I am having fun learning a little bit of Arabic, even though it's, it's not great. It's not great at all, but you know, learning my prayers and stuff like that. And just like learning dua, like if I learn a dua and I remember it by heart, like it just makes me so happy. So those are just kind of some things that I'm really like enjoying about Islam right now. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I wanted to welcome you to the faith and express how happy I am to see some person convert to Islam. And I also had a um, comment and a question. Okay, my thank you. Is, uh, 
my comment is, you mentioned numerous times that you've met a lot of wonderful Muslims and have a lot of new friends who check in on you and ask how things are doing for you. I also wanted to bring to your attention that you're also going to meet a lot of not so wonderful Muslims throughout your journey. You're going to meet a lot of people who are going to lie to you and be dishonest and be deceitful. Muslims are a population of over 1 billion people who are human beings. Sometimes the devil gets the best of us. Yeah. So please just keep in mind that Islam as a religion is perfect, but Muslims who follow it and practice it are not perfect. So please, if you ever feel uh, mistreated by any Muslim, uh, please don't let that uh, make you start to hate Islam. Thank you. I do appreciate it. So you can't see it now, but I, I do have a lot of tattoos. So I am covered in tattoos. Like my whole face and neck is all covered in tattoos. And I get a lot of, well, are you going to get them removed? Like you have to remove them. Like you cannot be a Muslim with your tattoos. And I'm like, well, they're not, <laughs> they're, they're permanent. They're not going anywhere, you know, but thank you. I really do appreciate that. Cause sometimes you're like, wait, am I, am I supposed to get them removed? Cause that's going to hurt like a lot. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Yeah. And one more comment and then a quick question <laughs> is the second comment I was going to make is uh, like, if you ever, ever have a question or if you ever have some kind of doubt, the intellectual doubt or spiritual doubt, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to someone who's knowledgeable, who can answer your questions. Muslims who've been Muslims all their life, or even people who have a PhD in Islamic studies, there's been cases where they've turned atheists or they've even converted to a different faith, despite all the knowledge they have about Islam and history and the Quran and its meanings and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, faith goes up and down. And if you ever have a question, please don't hesitate to reach out. There's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to learning about the foundations of your faith and its evidences. Absolutely. I really do appreciate that because um, honestly, the people in my life, I hit them with questions all the time. And I think that even my questions sometimes get there, like it was born Muslims especially, gets their wheels turned and they're like, oh wait, I haven't thought about that in so long. But thank you very much. And I absolutely will. And the, uh, the question I had, and this is a <laughs> bit of a diff completely different topic, was do you recommend any uh, general supplements for increasing uh, fighting performance at the gym? Um, it's the way you eat, right? You got to make sure you eat healthy and um, get a lot of sleep, but just stay up on your natural, like your everyday vitamins, your vitamin C, your fish oils, your creatine, your um, things like that. But honestly, when it comes to fighting, it, your nutrition and your sleep are going to be number one. Um, so my friend wanted to ask this question, so I'm asking this for her. Okay. And um, what was your family's reaction to your conversion? They were, they were okay. I didn't get any kind of backlash. I didn't get anything. I think one of my little brothers was like, hmm, well, well, okay. Like, all right. Like, are you happy? And I'm like, yeah, I'm very happy. They're like, okay, well, we're happy for you, you know? Um, but my family is very supportive, especially because I, the way I did grow up. And like I said, like I wasn't supposed to be a success story. I was supposed to be like one of the ones that didn't make it. And so I think that my family's just happy as long as I'm not messing up or, you know, in dangerous situations anymore. So yeah, I've been, I'm lucky. I've been supported through my fighting and through my conversion. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you as part of the Oma now. Thank and you. Uh, something that I realized that you mentioned earlier was how now being a Muslim, you don't really relate to like the jokes that you hear, the show, the shows that you watch. It doesn't really hit the same because you realize as a Muslim how like, and I just wanted to ask how you deal with that and sometimes feeling like somewhat of an outsider, like you don't relate to these jokes. You don't really enjoy like some of the things in this dunya and how do you like uh manage that what is your mindset when it comes to that now? it's different it is different where like like we'll just take music for instance like um i used to love me some hip-hop rap in which i still really enjoy hip-hop rap and stuff like that but then when you just like hear the stuff that they're talking about and you know like like you can play that on spotify but i can't play my palestine song like stop you know but um it, it is it is interesting right so i am still in this kind of new new transition where i'm asking allah to like introduce me to more people who are more um, doing what i'm doing you know so i have been fortunate enough to like the 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 m's that's what we call them because both of their names are Mara. um they help me a lot and so i've just been trying to to 
get new friends of, of the Uma and like kind of surround myself more with like Muslims than just like everyday people. And that way I can, you know, talk about the prophet, peace be upon him, talk about the faith, talk about Islam and feel okay about doing so. So it is still something I'm learning, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a learning curve for sure. Uh, who is the greatest fighter in MMA history, in your opinion? Khabib. Khabib. Khabib not, and I didn't, I'm not even saying that because he's a Muslim. Like, no, like, literally, it's Khabib, you know? But if we're talking women, Ronda Rousey. So, there you go. Yeah. So, Sister Amber, when you were in New York last year, shortly after your conversion, um, you know, when you do the weigh-in, mm -hmm. you're usually wearing pretty skippy clothes. Oh, yeah. That's the thing with MMA. How do you maintain your modesty in such a female... I don't know. Well, in the, the last the last fight I did, um, not the one against Larissa, but the one against uh, Marina, I actually asked them for the, the weight cutting curtain. So that you, they usually only bring the curtain out if you're going to miss weight. And the commission was giving me a lot of like grief about it. They're like, well, you haven't even weighed in. And I'm like, I'm trying to be covered. So can you just pull out the curtain, please? And um that part is hard because like with an organization like PFL, they don't really give us an outfit choice. So like if they were going to re-sign me this year, I was going to ask them for at least a t-shirt, you know, like, like something that covers just a little bit more. Um, and yeah, so that part is, is kind of like, you don't really know like how to like, you just do what you can. So like with the weigh-ins, like I didn't weigh in in my, my underwear, my bra, like I normally do. Like I asked for the curtain and I think with someone who's a, a revert like me, who modesty has never been the case, right? Western society is like little, the littler, the better. And, um, so I just take it like small steps, small steps. Like when's the last time you see me in a sports bra? You haven't since I converted, you know? So I just try to make these small changes where I can and, it might not be the, the, for the Haram police that, you know, we call them on the internet. It might not be what they want right now, but you know, we got to all make it in our own time. Assalamualaikum. I was just wondering how can, how can you manage like b between like professional life and your personal life? Um, well, for me, I don't really have much of a personal life, <laughs> but fighting is, is my life. So I, a lot of my friends are fighters. A lot of the things I do are all fighting. And when I first started fighting, I did have to like, like make a choice to not have a bunch of the same friends that I used to have because they weren't really, um, benefiting like where I was trying to go. So when you think about something like that, you got to think about like your goal, right? Where are you trying? trying to get to are the people in your personal life getting you there or are they trying to bring you back from there? Because if they're not trying to help you get to your goals or your personal life isn't helping you achieve those goals, you need to switch some things around. So for me, fighting and my personal life, they're kind of intertwined at the moment. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, how is your journey with learning Arabic? Is it like easy or are you... <laughs> no, it, it, so I, I, of course, like I said, I get a lot of help. Um, I, for me, just listening to, I'll ask MJ. I have another friend that I, I ask him a lot of stuff often as well. And, um, it's just keep repeating it, like repeating it, repeating it over and over and over again. But, um, for me, like I had to kind of learn, like, where the sound comes from like you know it's got to come like deep from in your chest whereas like westerners we kind of talk in our mouth you know so um that part's been interesting but i do ask i have to ask like but then i also have to be like mj can you slow down please because i did not hear anything you just said he's like what i just said that that's exactly what i said i was like okay can you not and then i also have to remember that um like because he's afghan so his dialect is different than somebody who just speaks arabic so kind of hearing it from two different people helps but that part's been interesting but we try we try we do, we do all right <laughs> so when she asks me and i say it as fast as i can because that's how i'm used to saying it and then she goes can you slow down and when I slow down, I mess up. I'm like, wait, did I say that? Did yeah. I say it this way? <laughs> A lot of people are like, hey, can you help me with this? They're like, I'm like, no, never. 
next another person because that's not going to work. But uh, I do have an app on my phone called Nazma, Nazma or something like that, which they say say the prayers for you, and then you can read it. And so that help that has helped me one hundred percent. Like that app right there is. I mean, it took me eight months, but now I finally know my prayers from start to finish, like by heart. Um, but yeah, so the apps help for yeah, definitely help. Thank you for sharing your personal story. Of course. Sorry. Of course. My question for Brother MJ. Um, I know you mentioned way earlier um, that you train a lot of people from different religions. Now, my question is, like, what inspired you to choose Amber to convert? Um, I think um, I, it, nothing really inspired me, but I just saw a lot of... I just saw something in her where I'm like, you know, I don't know. I, I have this thing about me where I see stuff in people and I usually just go with it. So in her situation, you know, I, I did see her struggle and I did see her and I'm like, she's trying to do something. So, you know, to me, it's like, why not come to this beautiful religion? Why not come to, you know, and if I don't tell her, I feel like I failed if I don't tell her. So it's worth a shot. Were you worried about passing? No, I never worry about that stuff. <laughs> I cross the line all the time. Um, so no, I wasn't, I was never, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I, till this day, my own business partner, I tell him every single, I remind him every single day he was there. I, was about to say, I went, I visited you guys at CSA uh -huh. and, I was, and he just kept telling his business partner that he should accept the slam. And I was like, you're gonna do okay. it, and I tell him every day. And, and he kept being like, "No," he's like, "You're a great guy." But you know, and I just like with her brother, and I told him, I said, "You're next. I'm gonna get you." So, I do. I legitimately do, and I'm like, "Hey, you're. You know, why not convert? What's wrong? I'm a Catholic. What does that matter?" I, t I literally tell him just like that. So, and then catch me if you can. How did you bring her into? Did you give her a book? No, I, 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 uh, I, earlier when she was talking about it, you know, when she was going through her struggles, I told her, I said, you know what? I know you don't know how to pray, but, you know, what we believe in is one of the most important parts of the night or the day of the night is Tajud, right? And I said, please just wake up, just look up and just say, God, Allah, you don't have to say Allah, just say, God, help me, you know, tell him, you know? That that is a time where, you know, a lot comes out and asks you, "What do you want? What can I give you?" And that's where, when she did that, you know, that ask, and she did. Uh, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to both of you for making time to come and for uh, sharing your stories with us and kind of just being vulnerable and telling us about kind thanks, of your, your whole lives. Thanks for having us. We we both really do appreciate it because. Thank uh, you. He is, we're in the, he, well, at least I'm in this with him, right? Like he helped me with Islam. Like he is my, my guide. And so to be able to do this with him and for all you guys was amazing. So thank you guys for having us for sure. Yes, absolutely. Thank you guys all for being out here for us and hearing us. And hopefully I'll see a bunch of you ladies on Sunday. <laughs> we're honored. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to